Hello everyone to this RPE Energy Debrief. Uh, we are here to talk a little bit about the Integrate program that Dr. David Tu has launched. My name is Rakesh Radhakrishnan. I'm the Tech to Market Advisor on the program. Uh, so Dave, uh, we'll start out with a few questions here and a little bit of back and forth. Um, what was the original vision for the program and what are you hoping to accomplish within the program? If you can please tell us a little bit about that, that'd be great. The objective of the Integrate program is to uh, generate electric power from fuel, any fuel, as efficiently as possible. Um, the approach that we're taking is to leverage thermoeconomic economic synergies between uh, solid oxide fuel cells and engines, be it gas turbines or reciprocating engines. Um, what we're trying to do is basically the fuel cell stack is kind of the core of the power generation system. It generates between 50 and 80 percent of the total power, but it produces a fair amount of waste heat and waste fuel that the engine is actually able to capture and generate additional power um, in a more cost-effective way. By combining these two power generation sources, we hope to achieve efficiencies of 70%, which would certainly be a world record at probably actually all scales, um, at, an at an attractive price from an economic value proposition standpoint of $900 per kilowatt. Um, from kind of a, a risk management standpoint, we originally focused on relatively small systems, distributed generation type scales at about 100 kilowatt. So I'm certainly hopeful that uh, if we hit our cost and efficiency targets, um, that we'll have a uh, tremendous value proposition in the stationary power markets. But I'm certainly uh, interested in, in, in your viewpoint on, on the current on, on our potential value proposition. As I think about it, the stationary power market is still a very viable option. If you look at competing alternatives there, you have solar plus storage that tends to be a little bit more expensive, although costs continue to come down there. Uh, if you look at existing solutions, whether it be backup generators or even current fuel cells, they're not meeting a lot of the efficiency targets and to some extent not even the emissions targets, right, that we are envisioning for these systems. So grid-connected uh, distributed generation systems, certainly this could be a very competing uh, and, and compelling alternative. Uh, if you think about longer term uh, um, there are certainly other advantages here uh, if you think about the cost metrics that are going to be that are going to be met. But short term, um, there could be opportunities in the industrial power market as well, whether it be oil and gas majors or chemical, where some of the cost targets may not necessarily need to be at nine hundred dollars a kilowatt, like you mentioned. So, if you think about this in terms of the program status, what were the key accomplishments in phase one? And what are we hoping to accomplish in phase two, Dave? Um, well, in, in phase one, kind of our, our focus was really twofold. It was putting together actual system con concepts that enabled the efficiency and cost targets to be hit and developing kind of the core component technology, really meaning heat exchangers and solid oxide fuel cell stacks. Um, I think we matured those components to the point where we need to for system demonstrations. Um, and so in phase two, we hope to actually put together the entire systems um, and actually demonstrate our efficiency and cost targets as well as really adequate durability to enable these systems to be attractive in, in at least the stationary power markets. Um, but I, I'm certainly hopeful that if we're successful at 100 kilowatts, that we can actually grow these systems to whatever scale is required for the application that uh, um, is of interest. At the same time, these, this core technology is actually extremely fuel flexible. We're starting off with natural gas, but it can really run on any fuel, ranging from hydrogen to any sort of bio-derived or fossil fuel. Um, and so, given the fuel flexibility, given the extremely high efficiency, I'm certainly hope, hopeful that this is kind of a core platform technology that can go many, many places. I was wondering if you had a sense of, of where we might be able to take our value proposition um, if we're successful in distributed generation markets we're pursuing right now. Yeah, that's a great point, Dave. Uh, the fuel flexibility and the fact that it's a platform technology lends itself really well to potential um, adoption in three related markets, which are also requiring energy dense, but more on the transportation side, right? Um, those include aviation, maritime, and rail. Um, so I can certainly see a point when we develop with some additional engineering and technology development, uh, applications for these integrate R in rail, integrate M in maritime, and integrate A in aviation. Uh, and, and so I think the, those industries can benefit from the success that we may ultimately achieve in the Integrate S stationary program as well. So Dave, as, as we think about this, uh, how can the audience learn a little bit more about 
the status of the program, some of the developments, and, and where we might be going in the future. Sure. Well, big picture, we're, we're hopefully two years from full system demonstrations. Um, if folks would like to learn more, I'd encourage them to take an initial look at our website. We have kind of program level information as well as individual project information. We have, we're currently have eight teams in phase one. We're going to go down to three system teams in phase two, and there's some details of the system concepts um, on the website, limited details, I should say. If you have more detailed questions about the program or the projects, actually please reach out to one of us at RPE or even actually we have uh, email addresses for our PIs on the website. Reach out to us, we're happy to make an introduction or just reach out to the PIs directly. Uh, and, and you know, from uh, speaking from a tech to market advisor's perspective, I'm certainly uh, talking about these projects to many of the industrial players, investor groups and, and others who could be interested uh, and they are eagerly awaiting a system demonstration before they can uh, decide where they could adopt this technology. So, uh, very exciting phase two coming up. Uh, thanks, Dave, uh, for your time, and thank you all for your attention. Great. Thank you, Rakesh. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.